this right here may just be the smartest fan on the market. And dare I say, the most handsome fan on the market. But the question isn't, is it sexy? Because that's an obvious yes. The question is, will this fan improve your indoor training setup? Is it worth spending 250 Benjamin Franklin's? I don't know if that's what's on the dollar bill. 250 US dollars is the cost of this fan. Is that even, how? How does that make any sense for a fan? Well, I can't answer that question. All I can do is give you my experience with this Wahoo Kicker Headwind and let you make an informed decision for yourself because I have some good things to say about it and some bad things. And because I'm gonna say some bad things, I think it's only fair that I, as an engineer, give my opinion on how they can improve this product for future iterations. Because if we just say bad things, we're idiots. We're complaining without any reason behind it. So when I say some bad things, I'm gonna give them some honest opinions on how I feel they could improve this product. And I may even offer them a little bit of pseudo code so they can implement it into even firmware updates might work. So let's get all into this because we have a lot to cover. All right, so right off the bat, let's get the specs of this sucker out of the way. So it weighs about 12 pounds, nice and light, easy to put away if you don't have a whole lot of space. It has a maximum window put speed of 30 miles per hour. That's 48 kilometers an hour for us Canadians. That's absolutely insane. I don't know of any other fan of this size that can output that amount of wind. There might be a little bit of a blower fan on the market that I'm unaware of. So if you do know something like that, make sure you comment that down below because someone may not want to spend the money on this type of fan. So let's help them out. Let's get into the cool specs. So these are kind of, I don't consider them specs, these are more features. So what exactly makes this a smart fan? Well, there's two main things, and that is that you can have it controlled by either your heart rate, so depending on how hard you're working, it'll output a according amount of wind to cool you down to see if your heart rate's like 168, your wind speed might be at 30 miles per hour maximum. But if you're just going lackadaisical, 100 beats per minute, it's gonna go quite slow, just to cool you the appropriate amount. The other feature, which is a little bit more of a gimmick, is that it can output the same speed you're going in Zwift. So for example, if you're going 20 kilometers an hour on Zwift, it will output 20 kilometers an hour of wind, which is kind of cool. It kind of makes you more engulfed into that whole virtual world, but think about it. If you're going uphill, Alp to Zwift. So think about this. You're going up Alp to Zwift. You're pushing hard. You're sweating your ass off, and you just want to have a nice cool down. You need something that's going to provide a good amount of airflow, but you're only going seven kilometers an hour up this steep hill. So this is going to output seven kilometers an hour. It's not going to cool you down very much. So there's really no point. So my recommendation is if you're gonna use the speed mode, make sure you're not gonna use it going uphill. Cause that is just not gonna work. If you're going uphill, if you wanna use the smart features, use it paired to the heart rate. Cause your heart rate will spike going up the hills. And then aside from that, you can connect it to an app and have it controlled through the Wahoo app. So if you wanna have your fan output at 45% or 100%, you can set that using the Wahoo app. And just a little side note about the Wahoo apps. I had a little bit of trouble getting it to work. So I was using the Wahoo utility app initially to try and update the firmware. It failed five times in a row. I was, I was getting pretty frustrated, honestly. So I downloaded the other Wahoo fitness app. It has the black icon compared to the blue icon. I'll, I'll try to put a picture up here if I remember. And that works seamlessly. So I, as soon as I downloaded that, I was able to update the firmware, control the window put speed, have it set to my heart rate, have it set to the speed, all that good stuff, no problem at all using the other Wahoo app. So try to avoid using the Wahoo utility app. I, I don't really see the point because they're able to update the firmware using the other uh, Wahoo app as well. So I just avoid that for now. It might just be an issue with Android. I found a lot with these um, indoor cycling things that you, Android just doesn't have a great integration. I'm not 100% I'm not sure why, but maybe they just have a better iOS staff. So those are the smart features or specs, smart specs, let's go with that, of this fan. And those smart features make this fan worth $250? Well, I don't think the features alone do, absolutely not. But I think there's a few things that really do make it appealing for us indoor cyclists or indoor trainers of some sort that really make it 
actually kind of justified to spend $250 on a fan. So I'm going to get into those right now. This right here is designed specifically with indoor cycling in mind. All the other fans, they're designed for generic use. They're designed for you sitting at your office on a very warm day and just having you cool down. Or if you're using a gym fan, it's designed to have a large area cooled down. So it's not very direct. But as you can see from the shape of this, the output is very much like how you're sitting on a bike. So it's gonna be covering your entire body on the, on the bike, which is perfect because you're getting that nice smooth airflow. The fan that I was using before, I'll, I'll show you some video of it later on. It kind of was very odd. It was, it was yeah, it didn't work very well. So having this type of contraption, having the wind very directional and on me at all times was well worth the $250 combined with the fact that it can output such a high amount of wind and it has these cool other smart features, I do think that the $250 price tag can be justified by a very serious indoor cyclist. But if you don't have other upgrades already, it might not be worth spending the $250 on this fan. So for example, if you don't already have a smart trainer, especially, don't buy this fan spend the extra money towards a smart trainer. If you don't have a power meter, put that money towards the power meter and just buy a generic fan. There's not, this is kind of like putting the cherry on top. If you want the creme de la creme indoor training setup, then definitely it can be justified to spend the $250. So what are some downsides of this fan? Well, aside from the obvious fact that it is $250, there, yeah, that's a, that's a major downside. Also, I think that they could have actually made it tiltable. So, although it does a very good job for me having it directed and having me completely engulfed in the wind, it's not, I can see how it wouldn't work for everyone. My position is different than yours, your position is different than someone you know, so each of us are unique, and I think having the ability to tilt this front would be very beneficial. Aside from that, they do give you the option to have some extra lift. So I'll show you guys right here. There's lags out here that make it kind of helps a little bit, but that's, so this one kind of just shoots straight out. I think they could have done a much better job with the lags here. Uh, yeah, I think they, definitely the lags could do some improvement. So if I were trying to look at this, I'd have legs in the front, legs in the back, and kind of have kind of like a tripod where you can continuously extend the legs. That might be a very good feature as well. And just kind of put some more cherries on top and without adding a lot of extra cost to manufacturing, which would allow that price tag to still remain at the $250 mark. So for the physical stuff, I think that's pretty much it that I would improve. Like it is, it's plastic, which is, whatever it's a fan i'm not going to be banging it around so i don't entirely care that it's plastic it's just whatever like a a nice matte finish would be nice actually just think how like this looks pretty sexy but just imagine it with a matte black finish damn so for the software side of things this is where they can improve quite a bit i think so they have some pretty basic features like having it attached to your heart rate, which I'm sure took a lot of engineering work to get right. The same, same with the speed and have it controlled using the app. I'm sure that stuff is an amazing feat. It seriously is so cool. But I think that they could actually improve on the, having the speed and heart rate integrated together kind of. So have like a third mode, heart rate speed plus type deal. And how I think they could do this is using the Wahoo Kicker and the Wahoo Headwind speaking together. So if the Wahoo Kicker is going up a gradient of say 5% or more, have the heart rate take over the speed. So you're outputting that amount of wind based on your heart rate rather than speed. But as soon as you're not going up a major gradient, have it switch back over to speed so that you can be more engulfed into it. This would be kind of a cool little feature that would allow you to stay cool going up the climbs, but not kill yourself, but still have that ability to feel nice and fast when you're going down the hill without having to change something in the app. Because that's the last thing I wanna do when I'm going up the hill, when I'm at the very top, I don't wanna to have to bring out my phone and switch to the speed 
side again. So having the heart rate and speed integrated together, that would be fantastic. And I'm gonna offer you guys some nice pseudocode for that right here. All right, so here's the HR speed pseudocode that I came up with. So pretty much we have three variables, which is the user defined heart rate, which is the heart rate value you will input into the Wahoo app that you want the headwind to switch over to the HR control mode after it reaches that value. You have the current heart rate, which is the heart rate reading of your heart rate monitor. So it'll have to sample that every so often. I'm sure it's already implemented somewhere for the heart, heart rate speed or heart rate control mode. And then we want to set our heart rate headwind mode to the HR speed mode. So that should do the trick for that stuff. And then we want to do our uh, conditional statements, which is where we'll do if our current heart rate's above our user defined heart rate or equal to it, we set our, the headwind into HR control mode. Otherwise, our heart rate's below that, so we want it to be speed controlled. So th that'll be up to your discretion when you want the user defined heart rate, but pretty much this is what I came up with is for the pseudocode for this implementation. Let me know what you think down below. If you think this feature would be useful, maybe we can get Wahoo to actually implement it. That would be pretty awesome. All right, let's get back to the real world. So that kind of wraps up my initial thoughts of the Wahoo headwind. Very awesome for me. I have no problem spending the 250 US dollars or 370 Canadian. But there are some improvements, and I don't think that this fan is for everyone by any means. There are so many other great upgrades you can get before this guy, so make sure you do that instead, unless you really love fans. If you're obsessed with fans, this might... I would even suggest you buy this fan if you don't have an indoor cycling setup. This fan is so cool. So, for comparison, my mom had bought a Dyson fan over Christmas. And just for fun, I paired it up against each other. Unfortunately, I didn't get a video of it. I wish I did. But the Dyson fan was completely blown out of the water by this guy. It output so much more wind. It, the air was cooler. So the Dyson fan was the Dyson Cool. And to me, that would mean that it's one of the top of the line. Dyson's a great brand. It should output cool air, right? Wrong. The Wahoo headwind destroyed it, hands down, and the headwind was like $150 cheaper. So I think that's a win for Wahoo, but there's a, the Dyson fan, you can definitely move a little bit more, a lot more configurable. So yeah, it goes back to me talking about how they can improve the physical features of this unit. So. That goes for all the talking side of things. So I'm going to show you a little bit of video of me cycling with it and let you get an understanding of that. So I'm going 32, 33. And you can really hear the wind picking up to simulate that speed. Pretty cool. So I set the minimum heart rate to be 53 because I'm just standing around, but I'm going to try to change it to maximum speed of like 70 and then I'll jump around and see how fast it goes because right now my heart rate's at about like 60. So let's go down to max fan speed. At, so it's really configurable in the app. So let's say, so you can see that suck, as soon as I change it to 67, that sucker was flying. So right now my heart rate is 61. So it should be kind of fast. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It would really mean a lot if you could even share it with someone who's considering getting into indoor cycling and looking for a cool fan. And if you want to see more of my ugly mug, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot. We have a lot of things planned in 2020. We have the IT World Triathlon Grand Final coming up in Edmonton. We have Ironman 70.3 Mont Tremblant. We have so many cool videos planned before that. We have a lot going on and I want you to come along with the ride. Let's grow this community. Let's have a great 2020. I hope you all had a fantastic holiday. Woo! Catch you on the next one. Peace.